Tony Cadera. Welcome to another edition of Valley Vision here on Greenfield Community Television, a show produced and directed strictly by volunteers here at CCTV on Main Street in Greenfield. We, of course, invite you to uh, drop a tape off, send it in. We uh, love to look at stuff, and we love to come on our program. Tonight, we've got a whole bunch of stuff. Right now, I'm sitting here with Brad and Tom, and we're looking at some footage from the Woodstock uh, performance piece that took place actually just this afternoon and, and evening uh, down at Lick Park in Northampton. We have some We'll have a story about that a little bit later on in the program. In fact, what we're doing is we're, we're figuring out who the bands are by looking at this t-shirt, right? Isn't that what we're we doing? Yeah, this is, uh, this is Love, Love Minus Zero at Canned Heat. But we'll show you more of this later. Uh, up next, we have uh, an interesting, really interesting story by uh, Tom Jordan and Larry Malchuk. Uh, some tension in Greenfield among youths and, uh, and the police, uh, sort of a gang situation happening in Greenfield lately. And we thought we would uh, take a look at it, and we sent uh, Tom and uh, Bra Tom and Larry out to do it. So this is a piece entitled "Greenfield After Dark." It's not the same street that I started work on in 1977. In '77, at least the police force knew the person that worked at Hair Trends and knew what I looked like and who I was. Besides the tax office that collects my taxes, they know where I am and where I'm located. Yeah, they had guns, they had knives, they had baseball bats, they had clubs. You see, all the Greenfield cops don't believe anybody in Greenfield when we go up and tell them that they had all this stuff. So we just basically took it into our own hands and we got a bunch of our friends from Greenfield because we don't allow or like other people coming into our town and taking over. So we just got a bunch of our friends together and just said, wrong idea, guys. Yeah, a lot was done uh, behind the scenes that, that the public is not aware of, besides spending a lot of tax dollars and overtime. We have an intelligent network that we gathered information on what took place, uh, as Gary stated. Um, what happened after that was um, rumor and innuendo exaggerated upon exaggeration. Uh, we have one officer in particular that had the, the um, programs for the neighborhood watch. I've tried consistently for a week to reach him. I'm not sure if I'm just wrong timing or if he doesn't think I'm that serious. The recent problem that we had that was really publicized that made Greenfield pay attention was we had the rumbles with the teenagers on a Wednesday night. For one night, August 14th this year, any illusions the Greenfield residents held that their town was immune from the potential violence and disruption seen in larger communities were shattered. By different accounts, a personal feud over a racial slur, a drug deal gone bad, or the issues of racism and territoriality erupted into sporadic street fighting and confrontations with police and neighbors. Such violence in our community appears symptomatic of the widespread problems of adult and teen alcoholism, vandalism, lack of supervised recreational opportunities, and even teen prostitution and drugs. Of the many issues presented here in the program, each one could become the focus of further investigation in its own right. The problems, although related, are manyfold. At present, the solutions proposed often stem from the limited perspective of particular individuals. The events of August have served to make the broader community begin to take seriously the ongoing symptoms of unrest in our community. And in the program which follows, there's no attempt to create good guys and bad guys and find blame to a particular segment of the community. This program's focus is to educate, inform, and provide perspective. Since that Wednesday night, the community has become serious about addressing these issues. A Chapman Street neighborhood watch has begun to form. Supervised teen recreation has once again emerged as an issue, and the selectmen have toured the downtown area and front for their action. The solutions which will be proposed will stem from the information and perspectives to be found among the people of the streets, as well as officials. Since the eruption of street violence in Greenfield, we can no longer disavow long-standing problems. If there's a goal set by the producers of this program, it is to present the clash of differing opinions surrounding problems on the streets. It is hoped that in the clash of these opinions will spark the truth, and as a community, we can utilize our newfound perspective to focus our limited resources to their best advantage. I'm coming to you tonight from the corner of Federal and Chapman in Greenfield, and uh, on a warm night, Friday in August. The surroundings and the location is important because Chapman Street has been a street of controversy of late in Greenfield. A week ago last Wednesday, August 14th, there was 10 hours of street fighting of teenagers between amongst the Greenfield residents. Police were swamped with neighborhood complaints throughout the evening and it was hard to control.
to all the kids. Also, on this very street, 125 businesses and residential people have signed complaints and a petition which has said that they would like to see more police patrol and, in general, more things done by the town to make Chapman a better place for businesses and residents to live. Tonight, something is being done about it. The selectmen of Greenfield are taking it to the streets tonight at the uh, behest of Peter O'Gary to come and look at Greenfield on a typical Friday night. Are you aware that the selectmen will be walking down Chapman Street tonight at about 8.30 to take a look at Chapman Street as it really is? No, I wasn't aware of that. <laughs>
teen center again was being supervised by adults they don't have that structured environment so they're creating their own environment where they can socialize unfortunately it's in the main street area and again it's unsupervised so no they don't they don't allow us no place to go they make us they want us to go home they, if we come out on main street they tell us to go home if we're walking on the street in a group of four or five they'll pull over and they'll tell us to scatter they'll, they'll they say they're and arrest us i mean what are we going to do in greenfield it's it's walk up and down the street that's all we got to do they should get a teen center or a place for us to hang out until like 11 30 12 o'clock at night from my point of view i think a lot of this violence to the teenagers and you know the 20 year olds is that there is nothing to do they're getting involved a lot in drinking um i haven't seen drugs or anything but i have seen the drinking and i think it's basically for nothing to do and i look at these older people that are turning into winos that are drinking behind the buildings and put up on the street the teenagers are going to become them because once they become an alcoholic what what happens then what are we going to do with our kids we we're here they are our future is this what we're giving them what you're looking at is inkwell news on federal street in greenfield but it sells more than newspapers these days folks it sells pizzas and has a couple of pool tables to the right of its entrance. This is a place where some of the teenagers in Greenfield have begun to hang out. And in fact, it was at this very spot that the incident mentioned earlier, the fighting amongst youth, took place and started right here. It started at the ink wall between um, uh, white local youth and uh, alleged out-of-town uh, Afro-Americans. Um, the Afro-American got the best of the, the local, and his brother, his older brother, started, uh, you know, inciting uh, retribution or some type of revenge. And comments were racial slurs were uh, made, you know, to each other. And um, allegedly, the Afro-American was going to gather some more friends, and the whites were going to gather their friends just to avoid, you know, uh, in case a confrontation. Was again. The information we gathered was that um, an Afro-American youth group, gangs, I guess if you want to call it, from the Holyoke or Springfield area were going to come up here, see the boys in the hood, and after the movie they were going to seek um, revenge on the so-called um, youth group, white group in Greenfield. What happened, Paul? Well, a bunch of, I don't know Say how. It. Black. Say it? None against you, because I don't know you, but colored kids came down, and they started beating up on a friend of mine, and we all, they all came down and said that they were going to take us all out, and they had guns and all that, and we just said, fuck, sit down on TV, we'll bleep it, and we just went back and got a bunch of people and went after them. Big problem in Greenfield with these snow sacks. Well, edit those people out. They had guns? Yeah, they had guns. They had knives. They had baseball bats. They had clubs. But see, all the Greenfield cops don't believe anybody in Greenfield when we go up and tell them that they had all this stuff. So we just basically took it into our own hands and we got a bunch of our friends from Greenfield because we don't allow or like other people coming into our town and taking over. So we just got a bunch of our friends together and said, wrong idea, guys. Is this the first time this has happened? Basically. Basically, yeah, something like this, yeah. Is it going to happen again? If they come back, yeah. yeah. If they come back, yeah. What, what, <laughs> what do you think uh, their feeling was as they left? Now, I heard it was something like 100 to 20 or something to those effects. 13 of them to about 50. There was 13 of them that came down the first night. And we basically beat them up. Have you had, had any sense that they're going to be uh, coming back to uh, avenge that loss? Not yet. There was. We had, the first night it happened, we beat, we got the best of them. Then they said they were coming back with more. Then the next night they said they were coming back. And then they came in here the day after and told everybody in here that everything was cool, you know, no problem. And we shook their hands and all that. And then they went to Turner's and they're like, well, everybody in Greenfield thinks everything's cool, but we're going to go back and we're going to get to them tonight while they think everything's cool. But a friend of ours was over there and he heard all this. So he came back and told us and we were all ready again. We had about 150 people at this kid's house. And they never 
showed up. We went to their house and all that, and they never showed up. Let me ask you something. Why aren't the police getting the people from Springfield out of here? Because uh, they, they, they think it's, uh, yeah, they think it's they like think um, it's all racism. They, yeah, they think because it's they're, they're colored. They think it's us that's starting it because we were in here one day and there was a sheriff in here and the, the meter maid and they were reading the paper after the first time it happened and they're like, all these Greenfield punks starting shit with the, the Springfield and all that because they think they're bad. But they came here and started with us and that's what the Greenfield police don't understand and they don't realize. And everybody in Greenfield don't realize that they start with us. What are we supposed to do? Just say, hey, whatever, beat us up. We aren't going to defend our, our town. I mean, this is where I've lived for 19 years. Um, the recent problem that we have that was really publicized that made Greenfield pay attention was we had the rumbles with the teenagers on a Wednesday night. Um, basically, what I saw and heard was about 9, 30, 10 o'clock. I got woke up. My whole house, was, my bedroom was shaking, and I thought it was a train going by, but it stopped, and then two minutes later, it started again, and I couldn't figure out what was going on, so I opened my window wider and I looked out and this man standing there slamming this woman up against my house screaming at her and um, I was throwing my clothes on and my husband asked me where I was going I said well, I'm going to call the police and I came out to the kitchen to call him and the woman started kicking the door in she wanted to get in or to get some protection and the police hadn't come yet and I was going outside and my husband told me I don't think you better and I looked out the window and there was kids everywhere, ranging from 11 to 20s, middle to late 20s, all over the parking lot, running through the bushes, down the road tracks, yelling obscenities, swearing, fighting. Um, it was just, it was like a zoo. And I'm like, I'm not moving. The police came. Everybody ran. You could see the crews were coming down the street. The woman that was kicking at my door, her, whoever she was fighting with grabbed her hand and they ran over the railroad tracks laughing like it was a joke. And I'm sitting in the middle of my house like, what just happened? Uh, everybody hid. The police went through. After they left, it started all over again. We left people. Uh, one house in particular, most of them still stayed there. Uh, and they were partying and they were still yelling and fighting. I said, call the police department back again. And they did. And the police were left empty handed again. And this went on all night long until four in the morning. And it was, it was violent. It was verbally violent as well as physically. And it was scary. We had officers um, surveying the movie theater. They were surveying the groups coming out. There were no groups uh, observed to fit this description. We had extra manpower during this period. Um, at one time, we had two officers on overtime working 4 to 12, and we had one officer on overtime working uh, 12 to 8. Our information uh, finally concluded that this was a gross exaggeration, and we ended this overtime. To what degree is it, a, is it a racial thing, or is it just someone from another town, period? It's just someone from another town. Because it's probably, where they're from, it's probably getting too hot out there and they can't handle it. So they're going to come down like to a little town like this and try and take this over and make this their new territory or whatever. It's now 10 o'clock on a Friday evening and we're sitting in the police station. For the last two hours, we've been walking the streets of Greenfield with concerned citizens, selectmen, and the chief of police and Sergeant Carter, who have been walking along the streets with us, showing us where the problems have been. The problems seem to be twofold. On the one hand, there are intoxicated adults coming out of bars who have been serving them while they've been intoxicated already. The other problem, teens. Where do they go on a given Friday night? Uh, the teens that we talked to today would say that there's just no place for them to go. It seems the police agree, but there's no money for the teen center or for other places to keep teens occupied on a given night like this and so people shrug their shoulders. Uh, we spoke with concerned citizens on Chapman Street, and they expressed concerns that perhaps a foot patrolman could help. Again, we come up with the problem and the issue of money. Behind me is the Victoria Diner. This place, amongst others, is renowned for allegedly intoxicated people coming out and causing problems on the street. The owners according to the Greenfield Recorder, have denied that the intoxication of the individuals found on 
Chapman Street late at night uh, have anything to do with their bar. They turn intoxicated people away. Well, that's not what the people of Chapman Street feel. Regardless of what they say, I feel like the Vic does bring on a lot of these problems. But we were to put a package store under surveillance, any package store, I'm sure we could come up with at least one or two people who are intoxicated and have been allowed to purchase additional alcoholic beverages. Um, unfortunately, these are some of the people on the streets who are causing a lot of problems. And again, if we were to put a surveillance on any bar, we could go into any bar at any given moment and find a person who is intoxicated still being served. Again, that is against the law. And these, when they leave the bars, unfortunately, it's probably these same people who cause the disturbances on the streets or one of the part of the groups. Now people will ask, why hasn't that been done? At places, known places, for example, bars that do do that, why hasn't it been shut down? Or a bar or a package store? We have, we uh, did one here a while ago. We shut down the Victoria Bar for I think it was five days uh, for alcohol violations according to their liquor license. Unfortunately, it's a rarity right now to have a street person at night come to midnight to eight shift. Some of the biggest problems occur after midnight when the bar is closed. basically stem from the home. I mean, if there's problems in the home, they filter out onto the streets. How can the police correct the problems at home? We can't. One of the things we found out, we have youth on the street, uh, and they're drinking, they're underage. One of the options we can take is bring them into the PD, call the parents, and have the parents handle the matter. Usually the parents had no idea this was going on, none. And as a result of this, we rarely see these kids a second time because the problem has been taken care of in the home. What I'd like to see you people do sometime, walk the streets with these cameras, go to some of these spots where these kids are raising hell, where they're drinking, where they're screaming and yelling, sometimes even fighting. Put it on TV, advertise it so the families, the parents in Greenfield can look at it and say, my God, that's, that's my kid. What is he doing there? Some of the parents um, really don't care uh, what happens to some of the kids or care what they're doing at night. What's your name? Brian. Okay, Brian, let me ask you something. How old are you? Nine. Nine, okay. Uh, what are you doing out here? Playing pool. I wish I was a millionaire. I'd give them their teen center and anything they wanted because they need a place to go and they need care, they need love, and they need somebody. And they need 
something to do. And I feel I relate to it very much because um, sometimes I still feel the same. <laughs> Did you ever go to the teen center when it was open down there at the Rotary? Every weekend. A lot of, lot of times the people come from broken homes and they don't have the supervision. The parents or whatever uh, don't care. The kid's out, 15 years old. You could, you know, ask some ages around tonight uh, after midnight. You'll, you'll see 13, 14, 15, uh, some even younger. And what are they doing out? You know, I realize uh, curfews are unconstitutional in some of people's eyes, but I think uh, you know, other towns have done it. When I used to work in Brattleboro, Vermont, they uh, had a curfew, nine o'clock. We could pick you up and bring you home, and, or you know, call uh, social rehabilitative services if, uh, to handle the problem. I hope that they have more understanding, and I hope it's not used against these kids. I hope that they group together, they come up with some ideas to get these kids off the streets, and I don't mean lock them up and throw the key away. I mean give these kids a chance, and they just might surprise us. As far as keeping this going, I'm going to do my best to make sure the police department knows that I'm here and that I, I don't think I'm going to give this a chance to lay down. Uh, and I hope that a lot of other people that are getting involved and are aware stand up because a lot of these people have kids that are going to grow up and it could be their kids out there with nothing to do, getting in fights. I think people better start now and, and start taking care of what's going on here and start opening up um, themselves and their hearts and letting these kids have a place. Uh, my understanding is the teen center um, has had options to put in different places in town, but the residents don't want them there. They're afraid of violence. How do they know until they give it a chance? Let's get some people together, make them aware. Let's give these kids a chance, and they just might surprise everybody. Yeah, he said, and basically he just said, and if I see you guys hanging around, I'm just going to haul you in. But the people that hang around on the street don't go out looking for fights, and that's really all I